Good morning, everyone. Okay, I've got 935, so let's kick off. Marquita, you ready? Yep. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for roll calling. Um, so we kind of know who we've got in here. Um, it's nice to see your names this morning, at the very least. So thanks um, for joining us. I'm glad to see you here because there's um, a lot to know about this application that's not in the application. So it's really helpful to um, do this session. It's gonna put you in, a, I think, a better spot for getting all of the money you should get as part of this grant program. So let's, uh, let's move forward. I'm gonna present, and then Savina Monet from Cannabis Workers Coalition is also going to present today. All right, so here's what we'll cover. What is the Cannabis Emergency Relief Fund or SURF? What criteria does a business need to meet to qualify? What disaster emergency situations qualify for relief? Um, it's a, I'm gonna say this often, it's first come first serve. So recommendation is apply on February 1, February 2, February 3, but don't let that first week of February go without applying. You want your application in early. When money runs out, it will run out. So uh, please apply early. And then we're gonna talk about, Savina specifically will share what relief is available to your employees or former employees. So next slide. What is SURF? SURF was set up by the city of Portland, the cannabis program uh, leadership. Many of you know Dashita Dawson and Christina Corsi, um, but this was um, really giving credit to Dashita and her work with the Office of Civic Life, which is not their name anymore, I don't think, but um, maybe it is, uh, that ONI or Civic Life Office. And they are the ones who really um, created this program. Uh, really, it was the right thing to do, right? So they're recognizing the gap the cannabis businesses have in funding. And they've set aside this program because you don't have access to federal funds the way other businesses do for these disasters that you are, have suffered. And we also know um, how economically fragile our businesses can be with 280E um, and the state of the market. So this funding is coming at the right time. It's up to 25,000 for businesses, up to 5,000 for individuals. 
and um, owners of an establishment, as you see, may apply as either the business or as an individual, but not both. You're going to want to apply as a business. So if you qualify, that's what you want to do. If you don't qualify, we'll talk about what businesses qualify. If your business does not qualify, you might have a path to apply as an individual. So the um, criteria business needs to meet is I'm going to kind of back up and give you the big picture criteria. You either have to be a small business as defined by being less than 2 million in funding, and we'll look at this again, or holding three or fewer licenses. So either defined as a small business in that way, or you're a majority minority owned business uh, or women owned business or veteran owned business. So the or is you either have to be 51% owned by a uh, person of color, people of color, uh, female ownership or uh, a veteran ownership. So either or, you're either a small business or the city's application calls it disadvantaged owned business. And I just laid out kind of the three groups they consider disadvantaged owned, people of color, women and veterans. Okay, so it's either or. A lot of you are both. You're both under two million and under three licenses and minority owned. Looking at looking at the folks that are here, that's great um, because those are the kind of things that show the level of need is probably greater because you have less access to capital. So. Um, you know, those are kind of things that we're looking for because the intent of this program was around equity. The intent is to prioritize uh, the businesses who are disadvantaged owned. Okay, sorry, not quite yet. <laughs> what disasters or uh, situations qualify for relief? So you've got um, this list here, COVID-19, and that spreads from, you've got to spend money on PPE equipment, you've got to shut down, you've got to run with less staff, so that may Im impact your revenue. You've got to um, deal with the maybe logistical challenges and what are some of the logistical challenges of COVID-19 that may have cost you money? Like really think through COVID-19 is just like one thing, one little small phrase there, one word, but think through all of the ways these changes and the requirements and regulations due to COVID has impacted your business and where that created cost or where that um, may have lost you sales. And those are the places where you think, okay, we can get relief for that. Vandalism and robberies, un unfortunately, amongst our community has run amok uh, recently. And so if you've had either, um, you can ask for grant relief for that. If you've had multiple, um, I see a few of you on here, with, unfortunately, you've been a victim more than once. Every single time you're asking for relief and compensation um, or grant money for each of those robberies. Okay, and then the residual effects of illness, trauma, and grief suffered from impacts. You absolutely can ask for grant money for the residual effects of illness, trauma, and grief suffered from such impacts. I'm sure you've all had that. All right, next slide. Again, first come, first serve. I said I'd mention it a lot. That's just your encouragement to get these applications in. Take this weekend, complete the applications, have them ready on the first. Next slide. All right, so we are gonna move into the actual application. I'm gonna walk you through that. And I'm actually gonna share my screen. Marquita, if you could um, stop sharing for a second, I'll pull the application up. Thank you though. All right, as I walk, that was the kind of the broad brush overview. As I walk through this application, there's some really important points here um, about how you can apply and how you can maximize um, how you apply. So let's look at that. The other thing I'll say is I'll pull this up because I see a number of you on here who um, don't have cannabis licenses. So that's where we're going to start is being really clear about who qualifies. Um, and what kind of license you need to qualify. Um, so let's just start with that. Let's start with the, the broad brush. So I did the very high level of you gotta be a small business or you gotta be minority owned. So you guys are thinking, all right, I qualify for one of those or the other. Here's the next layer down. You are either 
an ancillary business providing cannabis, providing services to the cannabis industry. And you can demonstrate that 80% of your revenue, your sales um, is servicing the cannabis industry. So you can be an ancillary business, not have a license, but be not have a cannabis license, but be headquartered in the city of Portland. So paying Portland business taxes because your business is um, addressed to the city of Portland and be ancillary. So that's ancillary businesses. And if that's not clear, you've got questions, let me know. You're not making a product. You're an ancillary business um, who 80% of what you do is for the cannabis industry and you have a city of Portland address. Now, let's say you're a plant touching business, whether you are, um, um, whether you're a brand who's using, you know, a white label to make, to make your products or whether you actually hold your license, you're all plant touching businesses. For you plant touching businesses, your license, your license to produce cannabis, has, whether it's your license or whether it's say um, Rose City Confections license because they're your white labeler. Either way, that license has to be in the city of Portland. It has to be a city of Portland cannabis license. Does that make sense? So there are a number of you for whom you don't qualify based on that. And I know that, um, and you do qualify for grant money other, under other city programs because we don't require that city of Portland license. You could have a license in another city as long as you make sales in the city of Portland. So for those of you who now don't qualify for this grant because you don't hold a city of Portland cannabis license, nor does your, does your supplier or your, um, you know, your white labeler, then we can, we will talk later. We are going to, through the other city program, um, match this or create a mirror program that allows you to not be in the city of Portland, but still get relief funds or not, sorry, not have a city of Portland license, but still get relief funds. So I'm like looking right at a few of you and I don't want to call you out for whom this is you. You now just heard you don't qualify via this program, but you, you will, um, as long as you are still making sales in the city of Portland, um, we will get you money through the other Portland program. So what does that mean, the other Portland program? Well, we have a Prosper Portland stream of funds and we have this city of Portland stream of funds. We'll say it that way. And you will qualify under the Prosper Portland stream of funds. We'll come back to that. The rest of this is for the city of Portland money. And I know who you are because I know your business is so well, but if you, you know, don't think I know who you are and you want to raise your hand, please do. We'll be coming back with conversations about if you don't have that city of Portland license, um, nor does your manufacturer, how do you qualify? How do you get relief funds? We've got another way. Okay, for everyone else who's still with me, you still qualify. Let's keep going. And if you've got specific questions about qualifications, ask it now. So I saw in the requirements um, that loss of sales and those things um, wasn't a, an item, a qualifying item. But then I heard you mention that if we had to close or anything like that, that that was a, a qualifying item. It's very confusing. Let's come back to that in a minute, Nicole. <laughs> I, I, it is confusing, um, but in the confusion, there's room for you all to get money if your store does close. So we'll come back to that and we'll tease that out. All right, before we get to that, there's a few other things that we need to clarify. Um, you may apply for grant funding for multiple licenses. So I'm on this first page of the application. Please read the first page. The first page is important. If you have multiple licenses, you can apply for this grant funding for each license separately. So that's the first thing I want you to know and make sure you do if you have more than one license. We are still waiting on the answer about whether you can apply if you have more than three licenses. Right now, the application says that, that if you have more than three licenses, you cannot apply for more than three licenses is how it reads. I'm not sure that's what the city intended. They are waiting to get back to us. If you're in the rare case where you're a minority owned business with more than three licenses, we're waiting to find out if you can apply for more than three. Okay, next thing is to note the ancillary definition. I just went over that, but it's written here again for you to take a look at that. 
Okay, so the next thing I wanted to share with you is the three places you could submit your business application. And these are the three places, um, new project, the initiative or the Oregon Cannabis Association. No double dipping is the first note. So you won't get funded if you sent both applications to, or an application to all three places, same applications, all three places thinking maybe they'll all approve me. We are cross-checking to make sure that you don't get funded via the same application for the same business via two different organizations. Um, if you, for some reason, wanted to apply for one license to one place and one license to another place, I guess we couldn't we don't have a rule against it, but I wouldn't. I'd keep it all with one with one organization, make your full ask um, via that organization. And then um, if you shouldn't get funded, move on to another organization. I don't expect that will happen for any of you, but um, that is the path should you not get funded with one organization. Maybe that organization has run out of money or has other priorities, you can apply to another organization. Okay, don't submit applications to the city. Do submit to one of these three organizations. And um, each organization has their, I suppose, have the information on their website about how you submit. To submit to New Project, you send us an email, uh, grants at newproject.org with your completed application. Any other questions right now before I move on? Jeanette, this is Sun, right quick. Um, when, when I'm on the city website and I click on New Leaf or Initiative or OCA or Canvas Worker Coalition, I've noticed that it doesn't take you to the application or, and I haven't been able to find a link on either of those, any of those sites of where to get the application. Right, so it came down last night because we noticed the thing I really just described, there's city hasn't made a decision on whether if you've got more than three licenses, you can get, uh, and you're minority owned or disadvantaged owned, you can get um, grant funding for more than three licenses. So they're figuring that answer out. And if you went looking for the, the application this morning, you wouldn't have found it because we all took it down while they, we get that right. We get that clarified. Would you happen to know when it would be back up? Would it be up? end of day or my hope would be better just check tomorrow my hope is end of day um i imagine end of day so they started assessing this yesterday so i imagine end of day we'll have an answer and all of our apps will be back up okay thank you sorry for the interruption no that's okay that's quite all right please ask questions if you've got them now hey could you clarify so um there's three different organizations that you can apply to. Each one of them will be uh, grading the application independently. Um, and then you said if one organization, you know, doesn't, so each organization has funds allocated to them and will be um, grading the applications and distributing based off of the funds that are allocated to the individual organization. So it's kind of like pick a lane and put your yeah. application in there. Yeah, I don't know who asked the question. Who asked the question? Uh, Corey Cooper with Happy Kitchen. Hi, Corey. That's right. Yeah, it's kind of like pick a lane and get in it. And um, not all organizations have the same amount of money. Um, for equity reasons, we got more money because we tend to serve more historically um, excluded business owners. So our outreach being um, to more black and brown businesses and historically owned businesses, the new project got a bit more money to distribute, but yes, pick a lane and, and get in it. Um, go with relationship, go with the, uh, if you already know folks at, at a particular one of these orgs, um, also go with, I think I would go with priority focus of the org. How does that align with my ownership? But, but you, if you qualify, you, will get funds. This is the idea of the program. So you're not going to qualify and apply to the initiative and get denied. If you qualify and you apply to any three org, you're going to get funds. So I want to make that clear. You don't pick a lane and pick the wrong lane and you're out. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jeanette. It's Yvonne. Um, oh. I lost connection and so I missed out. Um, I don't know if I qualify because I am plant touching, but I'm hemp. 
So thank you for raising that, Yvonne. Hemp doesn't qualify for this program. Okay. So I see a couple of you on, um, and I was noting you in my mind, you're all going to get a special reach out. Hemp doesn't qualify. So you are all, um, gather y'all up who, who don't qualify for this program when we've got the Prosper Portland funds where you do qualify. Hemp qualifies with our Prosper Portland funds. So that's where you'll come in. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on the city's permission to copy the app exactly, and then you'll have an app that'll be the same that you can apply um, and qualify for. Okay, any more questions now? Yeah, I do have a question. Um, so it's kind of back to the, the folks that don't have um, a license through the OLCC, but um, are in the medical marijuana um feel and actually grow but wanting to get uh, or transition into commercial how does that work for folks who are trying to um apply for this grant great question who's talking uh ramon hi ramon it just helps us follow up so medical marijuana marijuana licenses don't qualify for this program um we'll wrap you under the prosper Portland program. And the reason for that, where they're drawing the city of Portland, their like bright line is around, um, if you touch the plant, that you've got a city of Portland license or that the producer of your product has a city of Portland cannabis license. So that's that hard line. Okay. okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions now? Yeah, I had one last question. I'm wondering, does um, this round of funding impact any any future newly funding that a business or organization could receive? Um, no, would be the short answer. It doesn't impact it, but um, this is definitely, it doesn't impact it. I mean, that's the short answer, Nicole, no. Um, if you had a need for funds later and you know, we would assess that need for funds independently of this funding. Um, but please apply for this funding. If you were thinking about getting funding, I'll also say this, if you were thinking about asking us for funding for something else, but you qualify for this funding, please apply for this funding. Let us know up front you're thinking about funding for something else. We can keep that in mind, but um, you know, if you think that's helpful, but please apply for this funding if you qualify. One more question, I'm sorry. Um, since you just uh, stated that question, could you um, also apply for a commercial license to grow? through these uh, relief funds? No. So you have to use the relief funds to, um, and that's where we'll go next, to um, cover losses that your business suffered while it was operating already mm -hmm. under that Portland city license or connected to a Portland city license. So you have to already be operational and be talking about grant funds to cover a loss. Got you. Okay, is everyone ready? Let's go through these qualifying questions because there's a number of additional qualifying questions. I wanna make sure you're all good here in terms of your business qualifications. So we're still in business qualifications and then we're going to get to eligible expenses and Nicole, I haven't forgotten your question. We're gonna come back to it. Okay, so that definition of ancillary business um, or OLCC connected or licensed Portland, um, Portland license, I've gone over ad nauseum. The definitions are up on um, page one. Okay, my business is currently licensed and my business has at least one full-time employee. If you, the owner, are that employee, that counts. Um, if the business has employees, they have payroll taxes withheld. Um, you're not counting independent contractors and employees. It's really asking you the same question again. Um, you're compliant with state licensing. Um, you meet the technical requirements and the ability to provide financial records. So if you may say certain things about reimbursements that could prompt someone to ask you for your financial records. And so you have to be prepared to show those. And I'll tell you in a second, like what that scenario might be. And then you check that your business is historically disadvantaged owned or it's considered a small business. And if both great, and there's a place where you can tell us that. 
All right. So let's, any questions about that list before I get into eligible expenses? Yeah, I got one. <clears throat> can you call, can you only apply for one year and not the other? One, I didn't hear that one. What, not the other? One year and not the other. No, you can apply for all the years. Well, no, no, because I don't think we qualify for 2021, but I think oh. we qualify for 2020. In terms for, of for, re for revenue. Okay, I was just going to, in terms of size. Yeah, that's totally fine. No one's brought that up yet, but I think the answer is yes, apply. Um, and who's asking the question? George Lemagian. I'm sorry, I didn't hear again. No, uh, George Lemagian. George. Um, let can you drop your email in the chat or send it to Marquita directly so that we can follow up with you, with you directly? Uh, I, I did, I did, but I, I will with this specific question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't. I said I, I did, but I will with this specific question. I got it. Thank you. So I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, but I will clarify. And if you're all thinking, well, I want the answer, uh, we'll put it uh, in Q and A's. We're going to build up some Q and A's that will live on the website in addition to having this webinar there, and we'll confirm. But I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. If you qualified in one year via your size, because your size was, you know, under that amount, you can qualify in the you can qualify for that year and apply for reimbursement for that year. Okay. So let's talk about what the expenses are. I think this is pretty straightforward except for the lost sales. So <laughs> let's look at that. Um, it does say the way Nicole read it, that it sounds like it's no, that sales aren't covered, but they are. The city is splitting the way you and I would think of it. The city is splitting a hair here. What the city cannot do is cover product loss. So if you got product stolen and tell us the, the value of the product was X, you're probably going to get denied. Don't tell us about the product part of it. Tell us that the you had a robbery and that meant a revenue loss of XYZ um, because you might have had XYZ, you know, what was the value of that product? That was your revenue loss. So the city's trying to make sure we're not in a roundabout way, kind of paying for product or reimbursing for product that we're saying it's revenue, it's sales loss, you had to close the store because you again had to close down for COVID or something else related to an emergency or a disaster, that revenue loss, uh, we you can ask for reimbursement for that. You can ask for grant funds for that. Don't use the word reimbursement. You can ask for grant funds for that. Does that help? Does that answer it, Nicole, or, or no? Can you um, state that last part again? You said for, for revenue and what was the other part? Revenue, call it, so lost revenue, call it lost sales or lost revenue or you know, as a result of the product loss. So they're, they are okay with, if you shut a store, if you shut your store down and you lost revenue, tell us what that was. And um, you're gonna get, re you can ask for grant money for that. If your product was stolen and thus you lost revenue, tell us what that was and you can be given grant money for that. Okay, thank you. And then is there um, something also, cause I see armed security is not um, covered but is security that's unarmed covered? <laughs> Great question. Um, I'll ask, let's ask, we'll ask that one. Thank you. It feels like a yes. Um, I'm going with yes, <laughs> and I'll tell you if it's different. Okay, thank you. I, I definitely think the armed is the, the key differentiator there, so I have a strong yes on this. Include your security guards, um, and I'll like, we'll post if it's different. Any more questions? If insurance covered it, um, the expenses are not eligible. But this is where, you know, as you think about this, maybe insurance did cover a lot. Insurance is usually horrible and they don't cover anything. But let's say insurance did cover things for you. That's where you get into that emotional trauma and grief, you know, associated with this, with your, your situation. And you can see value of any products or cash taken is not supposed to be covered, but we have from the city, if you phrase it as lost revenue, we can grant you funds for it. Okay. 
here's your application. Describe what happened, list the dates of the impacts. Please tell us how you would use these funds. Confirm that you are a small business, yes or no. Uh, for business identifying as historically disadvantaged, you're gonna wanna check what applies to you. Please share any other information you think would be helpful. Here's where you start to get into your multiple licenses if you're applying for multiple licenses. Um, that license had to be yours, had to be kind of live, if you will, um, as of, I think it was January 1st was the date, 2020, 2021, y'all, I'm sorry. Don't remember the exact date, but I think it was January 1, 2020 was the date a license had to be active. So your license had to be active on that date, but if you had a, more than one license, this is where you get into um, starting to tease that out. So you put kind of one license here, and if you're only applying for one license, you fill out this bit that's on the screen. And then if you're applying for a grant for another license, you will check this box and you will identify the other licenses. <coughs> Excuse me. If your other licenses are under the same name, under the same address, under the same DBA, just give us a dash and the type of license. It's a you know tier one cultivation or whatever have you so that you can distinguish the different licenses. Also give a license number if you really wanted to. Just do something here to distinguish that you've got different licenses if the addresses and names are, are the same. Okay. One thing I didn't cover, maybe we're coming to it. Here we go. No, but somewhere you ask for how much money you want. Where is that question? Not sure, here it is. Please tell us the amount you're requesting. It's sitting right there. So for strengthening this question, this is my most important question in the application uh, I wanted to rest on. For strengthening this question, give the amount you're requesting and why. Just do a quick, quick calculation that adds up to whatever that number is. Is it 20,000? Is it 25,000? Do something that kind of says revenue loss was X and, you know, um, cost to replace the window was Y. And, you know, I had to replace the window five times and that was this amount so that it adds up to what you're requesting. And, you know, how do you value your pain and suffering? Stick a number on it, uh, stick an amount on it. So it just makes it easier for at all, not just new project, all of them, for folks to look at this question and go, ah, I see really easy why this adds up to the amount you're requesting. That will strengthen this question. Okay, get to the end and do some certifications. I certify I intend to remain in operation for the next six months. I am um, licensed the way that I said I was licensed and the time that I said I was licensed. I understand how the funds must be applied. Um, and I'm not eligible to, to get these expenses covered someplace else. You sign the document, you date the document. So I mentioned I'd come back to financial documents and that you've already said you would be willing to provide them. So it is possible you might get asked after you say, you know, we had to shut the store down for two weeks and it's X amount of lost revenue. Someone may say, I'd like to see your financials from the prior three months before you shut down to, to kind of substantiate that two weeks of lost revenue does equal X. It's possible someone may ask you for that, um, one of the organizations. We are all allowed to, and the list of documents you might be asked for is in the application. We're all allowed in our follow-up and our due diligence to request those documents should we um, want to see them. So that was the heads up. And I said, I'd come back to explain when you might want to, or when you might be asked for those kinds of documents. Questions? There's one in the chat from Dr. Paula. She's uh, stating, I'm not clear if I have the appropriate license. Do you want to elaborate on that, Dr. Paula? So we're happy to answer when you're ready. Okay, so oh, you're lighting up. Oh, 
Okay, if you want to pop it in the chat, we can also um, we can address there. And if you don't mind putting it in the chat so everyone can see it and other people might have the question. Okay, so before we switch to Savina to talk about the employee um, grants, I also want you to know, and you will want to put this in your application, you can ask for forgiveness for your city licensing uh, fees. So that is part of this granting program. If you have your licensing fees coming up, um, you can ask for forgiveness. If you are, they're already due, you can ask for forgiveness. So do that um, as part of this grant. I have a question. Can we do that for 2020 and 2021? I believe so. Yep. So that's good news. So you ask for your grant funds and you ask for forgiveness on those fees. You do both those things. Okay, great. So that's all good news. Um, and as it should be, <laughs> city fees are a little high. So next thing to talk about is your employees. You all have more black and brown employees. And when we're talking about equity, it's so important that you all tell your teams that this money is available for them. If your business has suffered, they, it, it, it's like the domino effect. They have suffered as well and they should ask for um, reimbursement or the grants. This is for both folks who are currently employed with you or not. So let's say you had to lay people off or folks, you know, their child care for was out and they had to, quit so they could take care of their child. Whatever the scenario is, if someone um, is no longer with you, but was um, at the time that the application says, and I'll turn it over to Savina for the details, then, then they qualify. So think about both your current employees and your former employees and who might qualify and getting the word out to them because $5,000 is real money. Um, so let's make sure everybody knows about it and is able to apply for this assistance. So I'll turn it over to Savina to talk about um, the individual grant so that you know what your employees qualify for. Oh, the last thing is I mentioned that if you don't qualify for yourself as a business because you don't have that city of Portland cannabis license, if you have a worker's permit and you live in the city of Portland, I believe it's live, then you qualify. So there's a number of you who I see you making notes because I know you didn't qualify as a business, but you do qualify as a worker. So you're going to apply as a worker. I would highly recommend it um, and get that, you know, few thousand dollars. So I'll turn it over to Savita so she can talk about who qualifies and how. Cool. Thank you so much, Jeanette. <clears throat> and then I want to ask Marquita if we can get the uh, presentation pulled back up uh, from that slide. Perfect. Yeah. And then I'm actually going to um, just quickly notate. So this uh, grant is special in that <clears throat> yourself or your employees actually don't have to be living in the city of Portland. It's uh, working for a city of Portland licensed business, cannabis business. So you have to have the OLCC uh, licensing as well as the city of Portland business. So, for example, if you have an employee that lives in Gresham but commutes to work in the city of Portland, um, they would then be able to qualify for these grant funds. And if we can get the next slide. Uh, and I also do a, just a quick intro. So my name is Savina Monet. Um, I'm with the Cannabis Workers Coalition. We started about a year ago, so we're still very uh, new. But we uh, advocate for labor rights in cannabis and hemp uh, on behalf of workers. So relief that's available to current or former employees. Um, current employees, you know, they just have to have an active OLC workers permit and be part of the historically disadvantaged or uh, underrepresented community which includes those criteria that Jeanette was saying, it's BIPOC, uh, women identifying disabled veteran. <clears throat> and we've also included uh, low income, which for the purposes of this grant is 70% of the medium income for the city of Portland. Uh, and I'm actually gonna include a link to our website grant page that has a link to the uh, census statistics that we're using um, we did a rough calculation, and if you're working full-time 
50 weeks out of the year that's under fifty thousand dollars then they would qualify um moving on to former employees this is anyone that's worked for you or if you yourself have worked uh march 1st and on um, before March, unfortunately, we're not able to help anyone if they're laid off before March, uh, but March 1st is that cutoff deadline. And um, for previous employees, they're able to apply if they currently have um, an expired workers permit so long as the workers permit expired after March. So again, if it expired in February, it's just right before that cutoff date and they would not be eligible for this grant. And then again, I just wanna stress that uh, they do not have to be living in the city of Portland, only working for a city of Portland licensed cannabis business. And I know the Portland metro area is actually pretty big. Um, so it might not be exactly in the city of Portland, so long as you are licensed by the city of Portland and licensed, um, you know, an OLCC licensed uh, business, then they would be eligible. And then we have our individual application, which actually looks very much like the business application. Um, it includes eligible expenses, ineligible expenses. For the employees, eligible expenses include PPE that they've had to buy. Um, if you have like a salesperson working for you and they have to fund their own car insurance, telephone, internet, that kind of stuff, that can be reimbursed through these grant funds. Uh, OLCC worker permit costs can be reimbursed. Uh, and probably the two biggest ones are going to be any COVID health related expenses. So if um, you're unable to offer sick days, but your employee tested positive and they needed to quarantine, so long as they weren't able to get those funds covered by anything else, um, they would be eligible to be covered by these grant expenses, or sorry, by this grant, uh, grant funds. Um, the only other big thing is rent and mortgage expenses as well. So if the person was laid off and then uh, fell behind in their rent payments, they would be able to get that covered under these grant funds. What about um, workers who got vaccinated and then got sick, but due to the vaccination, is there um, funds for that? I think I would defer to Jeanette. I would say yes. I think that's still COVID related, um, but that's a good question. Yes, strong yes. And I'm gonna notate that because I'm sure people will ask. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, expenses not eligible are similar to business if they were covered by insurance. If they were covered by the city of Portland, I know the city of Portland had a grant uh, for individuals to be covered for COVID sick days that were not paid out by their employer. Um, it was not very widely publicized, so not a lot of people knew of it, uh, but if they did get some days covered by that grant, then those would not be able to be covered again by our grant funds. Um, and then of course, legal expenses, fines, anything like that. Um, any other questions? Hey, Sabina, this is Sarn over at Green Forest. Just one quick question. You know, I know ancillary businesses qualify for the business grant, but do employees of ancillary companies qualify for the individual grant? Um, I would say the biggest defining factor is if they have that OLCC permit um, or if ever they had that OLCC permit. That's, that's the biggest one that the city of Portland is defining as a cannabis employee. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the only other thing I'll note is that on our website, um, we have a paper application or paper copy of the application. Uh, employees are encouraged to send that to our grants at cannabisworkerscoalition.org. Uh, email. We have that all listed on the webpage. Uh, if for some 
reason they're having some trouble filling out the PDF, uh, have them reach out to us. We have another form uh, that's a little bit more accessible for mobile um, or later dates of uh, iOS. Is it just for W-2 employees or just 1099 count? Good question. I would say W-2 employees, um, or I guess that's a good question. We a, yeah, we have people that work there, but they're 1099 because they're like come in and go like social media people, but they're within the industry and they were definitely impacted. Do they have a worker's permit? They do, yep. So I don't think that it says one way or the other. So then the answer is yes. And as long as I have the worker's permit and meet the other qualifications about location, yes. Okay, very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Another good question, thank you. I'm also gonna include um, the Cannabis Workers Coalition email. I would just put that in the chat if anyone has any additional questions uh, or they wanna direct workers uh, our way. Well, so many people got on. I'm so glad. Um, any more questions about the business grant or the individual grants? No? Okay, well, this is great news. A couple of you were like, mm -hmm. but it's money for almost all of you, even if it's just an in the, the worker, um, you know, grant, and that's, it can get up to 5,000. So that's still something. And if you aren't qualified because you don't have that city of Portland license, um, but you are a licensed cannabis business just somewhere else in the state of Oregon, we will wrap our arms around you because you need these grant funds too. So we've got our Prosper Portland money. You're not gonna be left out in the cold. And we'll follow up with the exact processes to apply. But for all of you who are, who are ready now, the application is gonna go up. You're going to get um, a ping when it's ready. So all of you on this call, we will make sure that you get notified right away that it's up so you can grab it. We've got the question of when will it go back up? So we'll let you all know it's back up when it's up um, so that you can um, can can get, get to it really quickly and get to it ahead of other folks since you took the time to be here. Um, great. So then I see a couple of questions in the chat. Yeah, sure. So Jackson asked a question, do upgrades to prevent continued issues qualify like roll down security doors after break-ins? Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I, I couldn't say that again. Absolutely. So um, I've witnessed that with a few of you where you've had to upgrade your security, both at home and in the office um, after these break-ins. And so if you carry a lot of cash around. So the answer is absolutely. And if you're questioning it, put it in. You can always ask us. You know we're here to ask us a question. Text us, um, which is the fastest way to get me. Uh, but email us. Email the grants at New Project Box. Email info at New Project. Email Marquita directly if you're wondering. But if you don't have time for that and you want to know should you put it in or not, put the thing in. Put the thing you want to ask for money for in rather than not. Okay. We want to see you all apply. Any application is better than no application. Do it quickly. Okay, if no more questions, we're not going to keep holding you. Thank you, everyone. I, you know, yeah. we're gonna, we're, I want to see your faces. <laughs> we'll do some event and we'll get to see you all soon. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Jake. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Mark. Thanks. <laughs>